Hello and welcome to Live in the Hive, the only online magazine show dedicated to theatre across Greater Manchester. I'm Michelle Eagleton and you're with me for the next 30 minutes. We've got some interviews, we've got some theatre news and we're generally going to have a lot of fun. So welcome if you're watching on the Live in the Hive Facebook page or maybe you're watching on the Isle of Manchester Facebook page, that iconic brand dedicated to community and culture across our fair city. Now, what have we got for you on tonight's show? Well, we have got a plethora of guests. We've got these guys. We've got the wonderful Tony Marshall. Now, Tony is about to star in Jitney and he's going to tell us all about that. That, of course, is coming on at the Oldham Coliseum. It's a great production. And we've also got Refract, the festival that is going to be coming very soon to the waterside in sale. So we are going to give you the lowdown on that festival and what you can expect. So great stuff coming up very, very soon on tonight's show. And of course, every week we bring you Greater Manchester Theatre News and we have got some brilliant announcements for you this evening. We're going to get you very, very excited. Now let's kick off the show in style. I just mentioned there the wonderful Tony Marshall. Of course, you might recognize recognize him him from casualty he was in that program that iconic show for many many years he's taken to the stage he's on tour with the current production of jitney this sounds absolutely fantastic now i caught up with him earlier this week to tell me all about it and get me excited take a look Tony, it is brilliant to get the chance to speak to you before you come to Oldham with Jitney. What has the response been like? Because I know you're already performing it at the Old Vic. How's it been? It's been absolutely fantastic. It's been overwhelming, I've got to say. We've had um, most nights standing ovations. They really do appreciate this play. They really do. Well, this really is like an American contemporary classic, Jitney, isn't it? It is, yes, it is indeed. It was uh, set in 1977 in Pittsburgh in a cab office, and the word jitney actually means unlicensed cabs. Ah. So, in this community, what they did was they formed a band of um, unlicensed cab drivers who essentially go to the areas that uh, the proper cab drivers won't take them. So um, the jitney was actually the five cents, and that was the cost of a local fare. And that's uh, where the word jitney comes from. That is brilliant. I mean, the fact that it is based on something that is part of history, that makes it, you know, it's really a story that needs to be told, isn't it, Tony? Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it's about gentrification. It's about... Um, different um, generations and their views and their fears and their dreams and aspirations. It's a lovely piece and there's eight men and one woman in the show and um, we're all very different in ages and characters and this, I think Oldham's going to love it. Well, I hope Oldham's going to love it. It's my hometown. So I'm well, I was going to say that accent kind of <laughs> gives it away, Tony. There's no escaping <laughs> from that. It's not as thick as it used to be. Um, but, you know, I'm, I've, I've still got my isms in there, so they can't, oh. they can't take that away from me. No, it would be brilliant <laughs> to have you in Oldham. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But you talked about characters then. How does fielding your character then fit into this whole production? Well, um, fielding is a very good friend of the owner of the Jitney station, uh, played by Will Johnson. And the character is called Becca. And I used to work with him in a local mill as well, I've worked for him for eight years. And uh, unfortunately, my character uh, has a dependency on alcohol. Oh. And this um, doesn't really bode well with the other cab drivers, but I don't wanna to give too much away. I want people to come and have a look and see. But uh, yeah, he's, he's got a secret, my character, a secret that he's been um, hiding for many, many years. And uh, that becomes apparent within the show as well. I just don't wanna give any more spoilers away. I want no, no. And that <laughs> must be both challenging and, and a great role to get your teeth into, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, the research was, has been great. So I've been I've been drinking a hell of a lot since I got the job. 
That's like what we all did in lockdown, Tony. You should be in my bar right now. That's oh, it. I'm loving that. I'm loving that. <laughs> oh, now, Oldham, I'm going to call on that again. Have you ever performed at the Coliseum then, being a local I, I lad? have, but when I was 12 years old. I'm in my oh. 50s now. So, yeah, when I was 12 years old, I did uh, my very first play there at Oldham Coliseum and I, and I, haven't, I haven't been back. And I also was with um, the um, Oldham Theatre Workshop, which I don't know if, if it's still going, to be fair. Do you know what? It is, but I is did it? Oldham Theatre Workshop as well and the lovely David Johnson, who That's sadly right. recently passed away. I didn't know that. When did he pass? About two months ago. Yeah. Oh, no. And I, but he was just incredible. The amount yes, of talent that's come from Oldham Theatre Workshop, it's Indeed. Incredible. Yeah, indeed. Half, half the guys and girls in Coronation Street come from um, Oldham Theatre Workshop. It was a great um, starting point for you to get into theatre. He was very disciplined. Uh, the shows were really, really good and fun. And uh, yeah, it was just something that we that we enjoyed at, you know, at a young age. It kept us off the streets and, yeah, and it uh, also you know, kept us focused. People in the north the opportunity that i think you know a lot of people don't get in the north down south you know it's very much like you're at the heart of the drama schools and stuff and, and those yeah. northerners to have something like that was brilliant yes indeed it was indeed it was oh god rest his soul god rest yeah, his soul no, absolutely now talking to people that have been coronation street and on telly i mean we've known you for years in casualty as no what what was that like being part of the whole casualty family do you know, it was a fantastic experience. You know, I signed up for six months and in, and in the end, I ended up doing 12 years. So uh, that's a testament to them and a, a testament to me as well. Um, being employable, I guess, for, uh, for so many years. But um, I didn't have much to go on, to be fair, when I got the job. And so I kind of made uh, Noel Garcia my own. Um, I love that I, name. I've got to yes, say, it's yeah, a great name for a character. <laughs> I was saying to um, the producer at the time, Oliver Kent, uh, that gave me the job, I said, so why is he called Garcia then? He said, I don't know, I just like the name. And I went, right, okay. I said, well, is he from Spain? Is he half Spanish or, or what? He was going, no, it's, I just like the name, Noel Garcia. And so I didn't really have that much to go on in strands of characterization, but um, I, did, I did my very best. And um, he was loved by a lot of the fans. Um, in casualty. 100%. And, you know, mm -hmm. that is that is part of TV's legacy, I think. I think Casualty is, was just brilliant. But now, getting the chance to do live mm. shows and being on the stage, that must be, because it's it's different. It's a different feeling for an actor, really. Oh, yeah. And that must yes. be great now, getting that instant reaction. Yeah, I mean, I've, me personally, I haven't done any theatre for 17 years. So this has been fantastic for me to, you know, because I came down to London to train in 83 and I went to the drama centre and I left in 86. And obviously with doing a lot of telly, everything is smaller. So yeah. your rea reactions have to be really, really small. But with theatre, it has to be the, the opposite way. So I had to kind of retrain um, myself to, um, you know, do, do theatre. And I've, I've really, really enjoyed it. It's challenging as well. I've got to do American accent in it as well because it's set in Pittsburgh. And um, yeah, it's, it's been absolutely fantastic. And I hope that people really do enjoy it. It's a very funny play, lots of serious bits in there, but there's a lot of comedy in there as well. Oh, and we you, like you... a bit of comedy. Oh yeah, I love a bit of comedy, me. <laughs> <laughs> now, you seem to have your son following in your footsteps. I've got to say, it's totally rubbed off on your son because he's currently doing the fantastic musical based on Bob Marley. It's Get Up, Stand Up. Yes. That's wowing audiences. How proud are you of that? I, 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 I've got to say, I'm, 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 I'm as pleased as punch. I mean, you know, um, when he actually got the job, I, I didn't realise, you know, it, obviously he's, he's, he's the first in the family to tread the West End. I haven't even treaded the West End. And he's done it. And he's only 10 years old. And there's four four characters so there's uh, four little bobs and he plays one of the bobs and he gets to go on at least three times a week and um you know that's been challenging in itself getting him there and then picking him up but he's fantastic in the show he really really is and it's a great show you're right it's a very very good show if you don't know anything about bob, bob marley's life that's the show to see 
Yeah, I've seen uh, quite a couple of the songs that have been on mm. television. And I also saw a musical show at Manchester Arena and they were part of it. And it just got the crowd really yeah. going. Did you shed a tear, Tony, when you first saw him up there? On know, the I, well, I, I had about seven glasses of wine before the first curtain went up. Because I was, I was that nervous. I was yeah. so nervous. And I said, all right, I, I, I hope he doesn't forget his lines. I hope he remembers to come in on cue. You know, it was all that. And then the curtain came up. And he's like one of the first on, on on the stage. And as soon as he came on, he's got a little wig as well, a little Afro wig that he has to wear as well. And I, I, me and my wife just looked at each other and we just went, <laughs> oh, That's we, it. We, yeah, we shed tears. We oh did. my gosh. Tears Ten of pride. Years old. Yeah, that is going to be some. Some boy to look out for, Tony. Absolutely. <laughs> well, yeah. do you know what? We'll be looking out for you because I cannot wait for you to come. It's just round the corner now that you're going to be in Oldham. Oldham is going to absolutely love it. And, you know, it's great to have performers like you come to the stage and also return to to the north. I love I it. Know. I, can't, I can't wait to come back. I can't wait to go back. My mum's still up there. My sister's still up there. And I've got a lot of good, good friends still up there from back in the day. So... It's it's a homecoming for me, and it's going to be fantastic to to be able to perform on that stage again and to go back to Oldham. Yes. Yay! Fantastic. <laughs> well, we'll see you very soon. Take care, Tony. Thank you very much. Oh, what a wonderful guy there. Tony Marshall starring in Jitney at the Oldham Coliseum very, very soon. It sounds like a fantastic production, so try and get to see that one if you can. Now, talking of fantastic things to come, still on the show, we are going to be talking to the wonderful Darren Adams. He's joining me to tell me all about Refract 22, which is a festival coming very soon to the waterside in sale. So many exciting things on that lineup. But first, Firstly, we are going to take a look at this. It is Greater Manchester Theatre News because every week we like to tell you what has been going on in the world of theatre. And you know what? Every week there are some amazing announcements that are made. And this week, it definitely is no difference. Now, coming to the Opera House very, very soon, the 28th of November is the classic Agatha Christie's and the Mousetrap. This has been running for seven 70 years and people are still clamoring to see it. Yes, it's on tour, coming to Manchester's Opera House and they have announced who's going to be part of the cast and I love this. Remember her, Gwyneth Strong from Only Fools and Horses? Of course you do. She played Cassandra and she is going to be starring in this wonderful production as is this guy, Todd Carty from EastEnders. And of course, if you remember way, way back, I'm showing my age here, Grange Hill. He is going to be in this touring production as well. If you haven't seen it, I would definitely recommend going and booking tickets for that one. Something else that has just been announced as well, everybody's talking about Jamie, is coming back to the Lowry. Of course, it was a sellout when it came last time. It's making its way back and you just have to wait till next year. It's going to be back September 2023. No cast announcement on that one. But as I say, a real Really fabulous production and talking of fabulous productions I have been waiting for this one to tour for absolutely ages so I am so so excited to announce that Charlie and the Chocolate Factory the musical is coming to the Palace Theatre next year this is going to be absolutely cracking I didn't think it would actually tour because this has been around for quite a few years in the West End. We've had so, so much silence about it, whether or not it's going to be touring. And of course, now it is. It's got a cracking set, cracking performers, brilliant songs. And it's going to be in July next year that this comes to the Palace Theatre perfect for the family the little ones and the big adults alike so do watch out for that one tickets on sale for charlie and the chocolate factory very soon and i'd get them quickly because i'm sure that one is going to be a sellout now okay i promised you earlier on that we would be talking to the wonderful Darren Adams. Of course, he is the manager of Waterside Arts in Sale, but he's also looking after a brilliant festival called Refract. I caught up with Darren to find out what is on the lineup this year and how people could get involved and come down and have a great time. Take a look. Well, 
you are one busy man right now because I know that not only are you the manager of Waterside, which is a gorgeous art centre in Sale, but you're also producer of this wonderful festival, Refract 22. It is back, Darren, isn't it? It is for the fifth year, fifth year this year. So, wow. yeah, very excited. <laughs> We've got so many things in this festival. This is what I love. It's not just about theatre performances, really, the acting, it's kind of music, dance. And it kind of questions you, doesn't it, to think a little bit differently. That's right. That, that That's the hope and the ambition of the festival it is to just try things a little bit different um, out of your comfort zone. Um, but equally, it's as much about the work that's on, on offer as it is in how you sort of see that work. So some of the spaces that we have change um, depending on what we've got on. We have a lovely kind of pop up cabaret club. Um, so it's, it's quite experiential is probably the best best word for it. But yeah really vibrant mix of, of work on offer over the 10 days and that's what i love because festivals like this open you up to things that sometimes you possibly might not go to and it just then creates maybe new passions new love you said there that you've got like a cabaret kind of feel for one of them they're also outdoor as well as indoor you're making use of the plaza aren't you that's right all all of the spaces that we've got here we, we we put performances and events in into that so we've got a gorgeous plaza outside just by the canal um so we take some work out there and it's primarily as you said uh, michelle it's primarily sort of danced focus which is sometimes a genre that people don't always engage with um so actually it's really nice to kind of put that in a free setting a kind of public space public realm and get people engaged with that so yeah, some really gorgeous stuff, some quite, you know, uh, meaningful work that's happening there. And then we've got other shows such as Glam, which is a, a kind of exploration of LGBTQ plus um, life, really. So it's kind of a, a riot of colour and dance and uh, feather boas and, and various things. So it's it's kind of, yeah, just a really nice mix of, of work outside. And it's it, and pretty much everything's for all ages as well. Well, I'm going to focus firstly on one of the things that is kicking it off. See what I did there on the <laughs> night that is outside. It's free as well, which I think is brilliant to make it so accessible for people. It's quite unfit for females. And I love this because it's, it's a true story, isn't it? About females in Preston that were kind of like going up again, that whole ban on women's football in 1921. That's right. Yeah, the uh, Dick uh, uh, Ladies Football Club. So they were raising money for hospitals and soldiers um, with with their football league. I think you probably class that as. Um, so yeah, really fascinating story, and it, it really shows. Actually, we you know we think women in football is is fairly new, but actually you know that's existed for a long time, and it's quite purposefully put in the program because we're 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 hosting the the Women's Euro opening match in Trafford um, oh. on Wednesday. So it, it ties in really nicely to that in, in terms of what we're doing. But again, the, there's probably through through the festival, I try and look every year at um, what we can do that's a little bit different and how we can sort of diversify what we're doing. So we try and have a theme, we try and give a stage to maybe more underrepresented artists. So this year, lots of the work is about women and women's stories and also kind of celebrating female um, identifying our artists as well. So oh. it's really nice, I think, to sort of set that tone at the start of the festival. Um, and as you say, yes, yeah, kind of opening it up and, um, yeah, and, and inviting everybody to the opening night and people will have a chance to join us for um, a gorgeous singer called um, Little Sparrow and she's doing a free performance in the Cabaret Club. So everybody can kind of get a chance to have a look at that and enjoy that experience. I, I talk a lot about the Cabaret Club, but it, it's such a project for me. I, I went to um, Crazy Cox in London with oh, some friends. Yeah. And I just fell in love with the fact that I was right next to everyone. We were all crushed in, um, lovely sort of drink service. And it was just such an amazing experience. So we've kind of created that in our, our Robert Ball Theatre. So we remove all the seats we have. Um, I think we have about 30 tables in there, plush red um, table cloths, lovely table lights. And we do table service throughout the performance as well. So it, it feels special 
it feels special for for whatever performance you're watching oh i want to be there now can we race towards <laughs> the 21st please can we bring it on already um they're talking about women and and that theme theme of females and stuff one of my all-time icons is julie andrews Absolutely. i adore julie so i love the fact you've got truly madly julie haven't you and that's going to be kind of about her life and feature all the bits of songs from sound of music mary poppins i think that's going to be really special isn't it it is and it's kind of you know a, a fun play on that 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 show so uh, sarah louise who's who's the performer there she she's been here previously she had uh, a show about kate bush um and actually she was um performing at crazy cox the first time that i went and she was doing a character of pf um quite depressed sort of um the world is against a sort of edith pf so really really gorgeous stuff so it's really nice to have her as part of refract because it's such a such a key person um in that and we all love julie andrews and we all love the songs and oh um, i can't it, yeah yeah. Icon. But do you know what? I just said it's truly madly duly. I think it's actually duly madly deeply, isn't Julie, it? Julie madly deeply. That's right. That's right. Great title. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic title. Now that's on the 27th of July. That's and right. I do know as a mum, right, I, I really want to keep my kids entertained. And I love the fact of introducing them to theatre and all different types of live entertainment. That actual date, you've also got Groove Baby back, haven't you? And they're doing lots of different shows for different ages. That's right. So they, they performed last year for sort of children. So it's um, sort of funk and jazz. So it's a live concert with um, beautiful animations that happen throughout that as well. Really engaging show, really fun. Everyone's up dancing. Um, and we loved it so much last year. It did so well that we wanted something that was for younger children. So we're doing a session that's specifically for babies, kind of um, under twos, so they can come and kind of yeah join us in the jazz cabaret club and have a really nice experience and hopefully bopping on the dance floor or falling on the dance floor we'll have some mats down but um yeah just re really nice and that's it's so important refract is um it isn't kind of highbrow it's about making it accessible people can come and do it. and it's just really fun experiences whilst there are some shows that have a, a more serious undertone um it is a, just it's celebrating it's joy it's um, community coming together so yeah i think that's it's just going to be such a sweet sweet show i can't wait because it is half term as well and i think you know it is if you're looking for somewhere to go for the whole family you know it is great at the waterside having refract on at this time of the year another one that's caught my eye especially for my my older girl daisy i think she's going to love this fashion spies because yeah. it's hailed as the devil wears prada meets by kids so i think they go undercover don't they it's a lot of our audience participation in this one Dara. yeah it's quite an immersive show and it's um kind of choose your own adventure so you sort of pick how how that's going to run run through um it, it was there's certain shows that i see as part of refract and as soon as i see them i just know it's the right thing and fashion spies was one of those it just fitted perfectly it was great fun um, as you say it's kind of teens and, and sort of other but it is an adult audience as well it's an evening show um, but yeah it's just going to be great and i hope people dress up and kind of get into that into the spirit of that and it's a really lovely quick up theater a, a great company that are doing that we're also bringing a show called confetti as part of the festival as well um, so that's a one man show um, of a wedding planner who engages in a, um, his own relationship, his own kind of romance. Um, so it's a queer rom com for that show as well. So, oh really God. nice double bill for those two shows. I'm not going to be away from the water side. I've got <laughs> to say, I, I love those choose your adventure books as well when it comes down to like fashion spies. It takes me back to my own childhood and you know kind of that involvement in things it's going to be great i might just wear my best prada for that one yeah. <laughs> my best togs. And you will you will you will tell us about the father ted. <laughs> <laughs> i love this I'm such a fan of father ted and it's great that you've got this guy who's just paying homage to father ted tell us about this special show 
Yeah, so this is just a, a kind of fun take, really, on all of those, hopefully those bits that everyone will remember from Father Ted. Um, and we had um, uh, one of the performers doing something similar last year, and it was about friends. So it's just looking at Father Ted, pulling out some of those really funny um, bits of it and telling some stories about it as well. So I think it's again, it's, it's very kind of interactive in terms of audience participation. We want everybody to be screaming and shouting and taking part in that as well. So I've, uh, I've been yeah. told there's a Craggy Island quiz. Yes, yes, as part of that, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll keep that secret that um, after that, what, what it is, but yeah, yeah, there is going to be that. So, that's, yeah, I think, that's, I think, that's Joe Rooney, yeah. isn't it? So he's doing that, and I think that that's will right. be an absolutely cracking night if you are a fan, like we all are, of the wonderful Father Ted series. It was really iconic, wasn't it? It was, it was, and I think it's one of those that will, will sort of stay that way throughout history as well it's it's gonna yeah stick in our minds for a long time isn't it now i mentioned at the top of this interview uh, that you are one busy man right now how challenging is it to bring something like this together and where do you start darren <laughs> um a lot of hard work and a lot of um yeah time sort of um, done it, it gets easier each year so so this is our fifth festival so the first one was really challenging in terms of um demonstrating what i wanted to do it was kind of my idea it was my sort of showcase really um, and even bringing the staff on board and getting them to understand what it was and um that that took a bit of time but actually now everybody understands and, and the language of refract people know that's refract that's going to happen um, and the staff are kind of warned that you know anything could happen and during this point uh there was, uh, I last year, I was yeah i won't call, i won't go into detail to because it's, it's it's a bit crude but um something happened last year that even sort of shocked me um and it was a performer called johnny Wu, and i was quite embarrassed and um uh, and everyone just said it's refract see things differently and kind of accepted that but um but yeah, it is. It's just about playing. It's about fun. It's, um, you know, the audience have as much fun, I hope, as as we do in putting the festival on. Oh, such a great festival there and a great opportunity to perhaps try and go and see something you might not usually go and see at the theatre. Perhaps it's dance, perhaps it's comedy, perhaps it's music, you name it. It's all there at Refract 22. Great to speak to Darren at the Waterside Arts there. Now, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for this week did it go quick but don't worry we are back next week with more interviews and news from the theatre world but in the meantime if you want to get the latest about what's going on in our wonderful city all you need to do is visit the i love manchester website they've got places to eat places to drink and talk all about the wonderful productions that are on at our theatres and don't forget as well we're on social media as well do give us a follow and do you know let us know what you're up to it's at live in the hive 21 on instagram and twitter and you know where to find us every sunday night we are here on facebook at eight o'clock every sunday night we're on i love manchester facebook and live in the hive spread the word have a great week and i'll see you next sunday